How's it going, everybody? It is Doug Welker here with another Pull and Trigger uh, video podcast here with uh, Josh Rose. Josh, you want to say hi? What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing today? Today, we are going to be talking about retro class. We're actually, we're going to, so the next couple of weeks here, uh, Trigger King kicks off at the end of March, our dirt season. We're going to be outdoors again. And um, to kind of celebrate that and kind of talk about the classes that we have that we're running here in more in depth, Josh and I are going to be doing a show a week here and talk about the classes. And today we are going to start with our retro class, or technically, as it's fully named, Outlaw Retro. So we're going to be talking old school, the old school style trucks. And before we do, um, I want to give a plug to Josh, his Retro Monster Truck Review podcast. Um, actually, I, I don't say this just he's on the show. Seriously, I, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I love that. It's my favorite show right now in my feed. And uh, I guessed it on one of them, but there's been a – Josh has been – uh, knocking them out but it is uh it's like a book club almost where it goes over in detail famous monster truck events and you can easily find them on youtube and uh very in-depth discussion with knowledgeable guests it's a lot of fun if you like old school monster truck racing it's a lot of fun to watch the events and then listen to them be completely dissected with uh, some humor insight and everything so i will have the link as always here below but check that check the podcast out i know josh would appreciate it so thank you appreciate yeah. i appreciate that it's been a lot of fun to do and uh, i've just been enjoying having a monster truck discussion with people around here where i'm from not many people into monster truck racing i had to go online years ago to actually be able to talk about what i love and uh with the podcast it's just been a great experience and uh had some really good guests on uh, this coming week, we're going to have Jason Rona back on, and we're going to talk Pontiac 1989. That's uh, I, the Kramer's Revenge show. Is what I, I watched I, that actually, as you uh, you've told me, you give me a heads up before on what's going on. So I've been watching them before bed. Some of the ones I, I just I love watching the old USHRA and uh, Tough Tracks, and um, we can go on and on about that. But let's get into the actual RC stuff, I guess. Um, so we're talking Outlaw Retro today, Outlaw Retro Monster Truck. This class is our old school class, and actually. It is sort of in in spirit to like the TNT series. That's kind of the the uh, era that we're trying to go after. And Josh, why don't you talk about why we call it Outlaw Retro? Well, uh, years ago when the retro class kind of started, if I remember correctly, it was the NRCTPA that started it. Their rules, and you can correct me if I'm wrong with this, uh, I believe it was a 45-turn motor limit that you had to run, and you had to run a, a special... Kyosho motor that's no longer available you, you got lucky if you had to find these motors basically and it was it was something that I always liked but I always felt the trucks lacked in power uh, if I can put it that way uh, trucks would hit the cars the front would pop up the rear sometimes you would catch the rear just right and you'd watch the tires come up and you'd it was more or less stage one retro um, I think that's what and again I don't want to I don't want to put words in, in anybody's mouth um yeah, I think they were going after stage one, though. I remember seeing those pictures, though, when the guys in the NRCTPA started to race those and how awesome it was. It was like, man, that's the Skull Bandit. That's Goliath. And it's like, this is sweet. We should like this is awesome. So when Trigger King started, uh, that was one of the first things we wanted to do was race the Clodbusters. And we yeah, we went to the 27 turn motors because we just figured, well, the 27 turns are in the clods anyways. So. Oh, yeah. The 27 turns are already in the clods. They're a readily available motor. They're a little bit quicker. Uh, I believe somebody did the math here a little while back, but mm -hmm. if you take a 27 turn, I think it was like full throttle pegged in a 27 turn motor with uh, RC scaled down is almost like 120 miles an hour. So it's still technically a little mm -hmm. too quick, but for what we do, it really looks and gives the feel of the TNT era. And I, I, I always like to say, basically when somebody asks me about this retro class, I say it's 88 to 1990 retro. That's yeah, that's the idea. I mean, sometimes we get guys with faster motors. We can talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Just how <laughs> just guys are pushing, you know, motors and everything. That's why we we've limited the spec to what we can use. Um, and it still is not a perfect thing. But uh yeah, for the most part, that's what we're going after is that eighty eight to ninety era, which is I still think it's the most fun to watch. And it was I, most I fun mean, to watch era and monster trucks, most entertaining to watch era and monster truck racing history, mainly because you start out and you've got uh, 88 stage one kind of racing with stage two trucks. They're developing stuff. 89 is strict stage two. And it's just 
balls to the wall style racing. And then 1990, we get the introduction of Bigfoot eight stage three starts coming in and it's just some awesome stuff to watch. Yeah, it's, it's just fun. Whole Every... Evolution of the sport in three years. Yep. It's, it's just, that's what racing does. You put under intense competition. That was the best racing um, that the, uh, the industry I think has ever seen. And YouTube bears that because those things are so much fun to watch. Um, mm -hmm. So in talking about our class here though, the outlaw retro class, again, we called it Outlaw Retro uh, because at the time, Retro was, I mean, really, there, it wasn't, I don't remember everybody running it back then. I know that the NRT, NRCTPA guys and like 45 turn was, I think, the accepted thing. So we're like, well, to differentiate our class, let's call it Outlaw Retro. Use the 27 turns in yeah, the class. I'm not, I'm not going to name any names, but <laughs> whenever we first announced the class that we were going to do, there was quite a bit of backlash as far as what type of motors we were running the, the class, the class itself because of the motors that we were running. Oh, I got, listen, I don't, I don't like to talk about that stuff on air for the most part, but uh, yeah, I got calls from that. I remember. Oh, I did too. I remember like, what are you guys doing down there? And it's like, we're just trying to, we're just trying to do this, man. Like, no, we're just trying to have fun. We're, yeah. Um, but yeah, we started, I guess in 2014, I think. And uh, crazy, crazy. We've been racing this long It's 2021 now. But um, yeah, we so we started it with the clods, and actually, originally we allowed lunch boxes and other stuff in there. Kind of got goofy for a little bit, but then it went back to what it is now. It's pretty much clods only, and uh, it's you know it's kind of a almost a, I say a spec class, not really because you can use all kinds of different chassis and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, the the idea is to keep the trucks around the same, and um, that's the big thing is the the motor. I mean, you that's that's the big part of this you can use different escs and different other things like that josh if you want to go over maybe some of the rules but um the outlaw retro class for the most part you're limited in battery 100 c discharge rating which is uh like sport mod is that, that we run but um different tires the, the one thing with the tires though you can't run the you can't run race style cut tires like the j concepts renegades or the like a full cleated style tire like a golden year top yeah. clod uh, Kyosho USA one, which I used to run a lot of and, um, firestorms. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, my rotten apple truck here behind my rotten old apple. I have clod tires on that one. And you know why? Because I, I think they look the best. I like the old style good years. I need to change them out for the racing season. I'm actually going to put some golden years on it, I think, but, um, because the compound's just not there, but I love how those clod tires look the, uh, the old good years. I remember when you were running the, the, uh, USA one tires, and those things were big and they look great when you're running. They were a uh, big wide tire. They almost, they reminded me more of like, I had them on Excalibur when I, when I first yep. built that truck. Uh, they didn't quite look like the tire that was on Excalibur at the time, but they look like a wide cut Firestone, almost more like what you would see on Digger 2 yep. or uh, Digger, Grandma Digger back in the day. Um, since then, I've gone to the Firestorms. I think the Firestorm look is there. It's just not quite as wide as that, that particular set of tires. Yeah, they, yep. And um, so we allow those tires, the, uh, and we don't allow the cut tires, the, the race style tires, which would become popular later. But as far as the bodies go, it, the idea is we limit it. I, th I think it's like 1990. Yeah, 1990 or earlier. And the reason we do that is because the name of the class, it's a retro class. We want to keep it looking as close to old school as we possibly can. Yeah, yep. That's the idea. And, we don't limit to, uh, you can run whatever like paint job you want. You don't have to run a replica. Now some clubs, I think they, they're retro class. You run replicas only, but this, um, in ours, you can run whatever you want on it. And it really is a cloud buster class and it's, it's become really popular over the years. And, um, you know, last year on the dirt, what we started to try and do was actually, you know, for the longest time, the retros, well, all of our, all of our tracks would be the same. Um, across all the classes because just logistically I know on here when you guys watch us you see the different like racing sessions but it's a long day when we're doing that and so if you really change up track stuff it just adds more to the day and especially everybody's tired out in the heat but thanks to John JB Skill Graphics when we got that cool track last year we actually the retros have like their own area so now we've been trying to make them smaller, like the, the retro track a little bit smaller because the trucks do top out quick and trying to mimic more of the tracks from yesteryear. 
Yeah, and I loved when we did that. And we, the first one we came out with, I believe, was Tampa 92. Was when oh, we yeah. And turned around yeah. and came back. Yeah. I love that track. We held the retros wide open. We had three jumps down the straightaway. It was a little, it was a difficult track, but it was a fun track at the same time. Uh, we did a, I believe we did a Chicago style race that day as well, which we were, we're still learning at that point as far as the space that we had. The Chicago style one quite, wasn't quite as fun. Yeah. But the Tampa 92 track that we did was awesome. The triple jump straight line that we were able to do last year was a, a loads of fun. Oh, the three wides? Of course. The three wide that we did. Yeah, we, we need to do that again. That was the, uh, for those of you folks who maybe, it's in our intro. We actually have the trucks, uh, the intro, our new intro that Bob made, um, part of that. But that's a throwback to the actual three wides in, uh, what, Dallas 1990, I think? Yeah, yeah. Texas Stadium. Te yeah, te well, sorry, Irving, Texas, I guess. Yeah, there we go. You want to get technical, uh, it's Irving, Texas. Yes, I, yeah, Texas Stadium, <laughs> which, by the way, we keep talking TNT. If you guys have not, if anybody out here who likes old school monster trucks, especially some of you youngsters, uh, go watch those two events, those TNT events from Texas Stadium 1990 to Three Wides. They are amazing. Like, they're they're a blast. Jo they're, Josh, there's your formal request for me. And one of these times when I'm back on, I want to Your talk. It's hard enough to follow when you're watching it. Now I got to try and do that. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, our bracket was crazy last year. Oh, yeah, we were... Our bracket was crazy. It was one of the rare times in trigger King. You saw fast losers coming back. Yeah. I remember that. Cause we had to, I remember Bob and I struggling with the computer trying to settle this crap up. And then we had people with stopwatches and uh, logistically it was a pain, but it was a blast to send those trucks three times in a row or uh, three wide. That's just, that was a fun event. We're going to try and do some different stuff this year. I know in the season, try and harken back to many of the tracks. Yeah. From, uh, and like we, what I love about the retro class is the fact that we can go back and run some of those old school style tracks. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't do very good on it, I think, but the, uh, the Houston 87 track that we did. Yeah. I remember that. That was a lot of fun. I want to see some, like this year, I would love to see us do some more, like where we run straight down the pulling lane and then cut around and just hit the cars. Like mm -hmm. have two sets of cars on the other side. I think that would be cool if we could do that. Silverdome style. Yeah, Silverdome style, um, Minneapolis 88. Uh, that was a great event too. They, a lot of those were. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know we're going to try some different stuff like that this year. And this year will be interesting too because of the. This is the first year the regulators are going to be there from the get go. Last year, the J Concepts regulator, I remember Jason, the J Concepts guys came, I think in June, if yeah. I remember right. They showed up to the event and Jason was running two of them. And um, just and he had two different setups on both of those regulators one single shock, one dual shock. And he did very well with both of them, one a bracket each. Yeah, he, he killed with it. And then uh, the next event, I'm trying to think whenever we had ours out because there's a few of them. I think it was the next event in July, but you made a furious charge out. with your Bigfoot four truck. And uh, at the end, but you wound up the biggest enemy was you just missed half the season with it because. Yeah, the truck. It's funny. If I would have made the rest of those races, if, I, if we took the old Bigfoot fours points, if I remember right, if we took the old trucks points and we added it with the new truck. I was the podium finisher. Yeah. But without it, I would top 10 truck out of like 50 yeah we hit a bunch that, that regulator truck works yeah the uh i was terrible with mine but re i'm i'm terrible at racing in retro that's I, i've done okay when i filled in for you on days you haven't been there i've used your trucks i'm gonna get my rotten apple truck dialed in more now um my truck here again i'll move there that's a right behind that's a sutton motorsports chassis my friend travis uh machine that chassis did the powder coating and i think I think there's another one that's going to be out this year. I believe Isaac, our friend Isaac, Travis, cut another one for him, and uh, he's going to have one out. But, yeah, I love that. Again, I got to get – what tires should I run, do you think, on that, Josh? I'm Because – On that? I mean, uh, golden years are kind of the ticket, but I, I kind of like the bigger look. You know, go Firestorms or golden years. Golden years are a taller tire. They're just deceivingly – the way the, the treads are rounded, it's deceivingly wide. Yeah. Golden years are, I think, the gold standard in retro no nowadays. Pun intended. No pun intended. Yeah, I know. Um, if you're running a retro truck, though, <laughs> if you just you know want to play with one or whatever, the J Concepts Golden Years, you can get them in gold or blue compound. And uh, all puns aside, they are they're a great tire. Most of the fast guys, put it this way, the fast guys are all running them. <laughs> 
that's that's what you're going to see. The Firestorm tires are cool. They more resemble like a like a '73 almost. Yeah. Like a, they, uh, I know what tire Jason based them off of was an old Bigfoot fork, big lugged Firestone yeah. tire. Um, they've they work well on trucks like Excalibur as a replica, they work really well on my grandma truck. Uh, when they look you, perfect on grandma, that they yeah. look like the old ones on Digger, yeah. They they look really well. The problem is, is they're a, a taller tire, they're a little bit wider of a tire. There's a little more mass there than what's on the golden year tire. So it takes it a little bit more to spin. You sacrifice a little bit of speed for the look. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we're going to see this year, any, any new retro style tires coming out. I know that um, we'll talk about it on a future episode, but J concept has those, those Bigfoot, like Dan Runty Nobby looking tires. Yeah. The not, I mean, that's, we should save that discussion for next week because that's going to be really interesting and in how those things like what we do with those and what clubs start doing with those. Um, but as far as retro, they're not going to be allowed in retro. If uh, they're not going to be allowed in retro. I'm curious though. I think there is enough room for some other full cleat tire to come I out. Believe so. I believe so. Uh, I would like to see a 73 style tire come out for a retro class. Maybe not necessarily for stage two, like what we run, but it'd be cool to see it in a stage one style design mm -hmm. where guys could do a Casper truck and it looks scale. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Um, as far as motors and stuff for our retro class, though, we actually just added a different motor that's legal as well. It, we had been last couple of years running the uh, Axial AX24004 motors, which are, I believe, stock in the SMT10. Uh, boy. Well, they were stock in the SMT10. Yeah, at I one time they were. I don't know if the new one has it, like since they redid the, the, uh, the thing. I thought they came with a 20 turn. I could be wrong on that, though. Yeah, you, I might be wrong as well. Uh, I just know that those motors work really well. Uh, and J Concepts just came out with a silent speed motor, uh, 9004. And I haven't seen those in, well, actually, I take that back. I've seen them in action. I haven't personally driven them. And they're they're a pretty stout little motor, too. I think we might see some motor wars in retro this year. Yeah, I need to get uh, the J Con ones for mine. I need to get mine ordered and uh, get them in the, the Apple truck here. Um, trying to think what other kind of, little things there are with the retro class like the different ones well, i mean again huh four wheel steering is one thing that we see in retro more than we see in any other class oh yeah that's that's actually what i wanted to talk about so um four wheel steer is it's interesting in this class because it used to always pretty much be if you did not have four wheel steer you were dead in this mm -hmm. class then the regulator came about and it's a short wheelbase high performance chassis it's got that that rear J concepts lockout that a lot of people use. And then that really, really nice behind the axle steering setup. And a lot of people just hacking the knuckles and I know to get more steering throw and then J concepts, I haven't used them. I think we mentioned another show, but they have that full like shape waist thing. You can mm -hmm. totally redo your, your, uh, you can redo your clod buster and get about an eighth to a quarter inch more throw with their setup as far as the front goes. And it works with that short wheelbase setup but if you opt for that longer wheelbase setup which i do on the grandma truck you almost have to have rear steer because front steer is not going to do it for you that's my truck is a uh the rotten apple truck here i mean if you can see also look how long it is it's about as long as an smt 10 it's a little bit shorter but i think it's a 12 3 wheelbase or something around I, there i do want to say though i want to i want to say uh for everybody watching uh if you want to play a drinking game for as many times as doug moves his head to show his truck <laughs> We're at about three shots now. I was going to say, well, you're not going to be that drunk. I think we're like three shots in. Uh, <laughs> Give it time. On, Give it time. Depends how much of a lightweight you are. But mine <laughs> is a long wheelbase, and there's no way that that would work without four-wheel steer. And I, for the retro class, I like them to have four-wheel steer. I think it's just, I mean, yeah, I guess a lot of the TNT stuff, they didn't use the four-wheel steer. They really didn't because TNT was more of a straight-line style series where if you look – obviously people that are going to watch old school monster trucks are more than likely going to go watch a TNT event. So you're going to see a roller hill inside the smaller arenas, followed by a stack of about 10 cars or a stack of about eight cars, five cars, depending on the length of the venue. Then they would go outside. You would see a stack of five cars and then a stack of 10 cars as your, your, your race line. Like you would, you saw at Richmond, 1990, uh, West Lebanon speedway was a little different where you saw the, the bump, the little roller hill. Then you saw the car stack. Then you saw the car stack at the end. 
three mm-hmm. sets. The longer the speedway, the more you saw those trucks go. Um, the the big one though, and what I'm looking forward to covering on my podcast is uh, Milwaukee in 1990. That's a classic one. Yes. I, I honestly wish that we would do some like a little bit more straight line and retro. I know a lot of people do, oh, you peg it and go. Well, you still got to have a good reaction time off that light. I think that, so I'm with you just because it does make for great racing. And I think let's talk about the straight line versus turning course stuff, because I think that's an interesting, uh, like an analysis on things. TNT worked great back then because I think it was straight line because when you watch the US the USHRA stuff from that era, the ones in like the big stadiums, mm-hmm. while I do find it entertaining, the racing is usually nothing near TNT. Now that there's multiple reasons for that. The caliber of trucks, pretty much all the big boys were TNT for the most part. You had like Fred Schaefer and a couple guys who weren't running. You you had Excalibur, you had Barefoot, um Taurus. Bigfoot right? in eighty nine, the, the the more popular Bigfoot trucks like six and seven were over running USHRA style shows versus TNT shows, which they sent brass. I think brass was there for the New York mini tour and maybe a little bit at the beginning of the season in Bigfoot. But after that, you didn't see Bigfoot in 89. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of those it's because a lot of those turning courses, the trucks simply just, they didn't go. Uh, the, there might have been somebody in a certain white truck from Minnesota, if you know what I'm talking about. Let's talk about there. it. Yeah, the famous. They, they, camp, they campaigned quite a bit to run just straight line only and drag these trucks because his truck couldn't turn. And not throwing it under the bus. I'm just saying that. Honestly, Ever Jasmer? You mean he whined? Uh, oh, wow. You never did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to do this. I'm an old Bigfoot guy. Uh, but, well, no. So Ever Jasmer, though, USA won. He would have the. He had the other axle, right? The steer axle. It's just they could swap it out. Yeah, it just the truck never got along on a turning course. It did okay at tracks like Louisville Motor Speedway. That's, but that's not really. It's funny, despite that being an iconic turning course, it's not a sharp corner. It's not yeah, where you I have mean, to get the on the rear. The time you were really cutting a corner sharp was when you were turning in to hit the cars. Yes, and um, it's funny thinking about all that. I'm trying to think back to when I saw USA One actually do some turning courses. I remember. Toledo was one of them. Yeah, that's I can think of Toledo, Ohio, uh, which was like that J or a U, wasn't it? Yeah, it was more like a U, and uh, Bigfoot handled handily won in the final round against USA. That was Rich Hoosier driving, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Rich Hoosier back in the day. Hoosier did most of 88, if I remember right. Yeah, and I I think I remember that final. I think he spanked (laughs) spanked (laughs) USA 1. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the funny part about USA 1, too, is, um, you know, just how it was a truck that, even even for drag racing, at some point it couldn't go straight anymore either. That was yeah, a problem. Yeah, that was the problem. Sometimes the truck would end up on its lid, and it got the uh, Rod Litzo got the name nickname Flipper. Yeah, because of that. And I know we're getting off on a long rant here about yeah, who cares? Trucks. It's retro man, it's retro trucks. We can man, talk about. I it. love I love the old school. And like I told Doug before we got on here, I think this is going to be our uh, our mo- our most fun of these th- these these three classes yeah. because we love to relive our childhood, and that's what we we love the most. Or it'll be fun school. to talk about Penda. Oh yeah, that. Penda and stuff like that's going to be fun. But to me, I don't know. It, this is my fa- one of my favorite classes that we run. Probably the my actually, I'll go ahead and say it. it's probably my favorite class that I run in. That's interesting I, to hear. I I started in Pro Mod back in the day, but man, I just I love the way these trucks bounce. They throw you in a different direction. Sometimes you have to steer and correct to get them back to facing the the way that you want them to go. Um, that's just what I love about the retro class. Uh, I, I see other clubs out there that they think they need to slow these trucks down. They think they need to bunch everything together. And I'm, I'm in a firm disagreement of that. I think we ought to just run them on the old school courses and let the best of the best come up to the, the let the cream rise to the top. We'll put it that way. The old, uh, that's the average Jasmer way to put the, put the big engine and let it, let it sing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. I, I just, it's funny because I didn't race retro for a long time. It actually, for me, running the computer, I know this is like boring discussion for some people out there, but it was nice to have a break, like to have a class I didn't run in so I could just like be the computer. Um, but I'm really happy that I, I love that truck, the, the chassis that Travis built. And again, I, don't, I haven't really been competitive with it. It hasn't been because of the chassis. It's actually a very competitive truck. It's just been, I've just been playing around with it and getting used to a retro again, but I love having one. And I love, uh, 
it's just fun. The retro class is fun. And I think this year I'm going to really enjoy it more as I'm, it's, I, I'm, I guess I'm kind of really rediscovering how much I love old school monster truck racing. There were years ago, I did the tape trading thing that with a lot of people did, but um, I, I did as well back in the day. I think everybody did. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's something I've just really enjoyed more so, especially as I've gotten back into TNT, like really watching all of that stuff. And uh, going back to the drag, the drag turn, the drag versus turning courses. Yeah. I think that, a lot of the trucks back then couldn't turn right. So you had races that weren't as good. And that's why TNT was thought, you know, was, was so the racing was just so much better for the most part is because it actually was the product. The end product was better as we do it. I mean, the trucks can turn. turn. And I guess we should talk too about how we do the four wheel steer. We don't just leave it four wheel steer hundred percent. No, no, no. Obviously with our, my rear steer anyway, I don't know. Maybe there are some guys out there that prefer to have it hundred percent so they can just crank it whenever they want to. Me, I've only got five or 10% throw in the rear of that truck. I'm the kind of guy where I like to throttle it to go into the corner, hit the brakes, turn it, and let that rear kind of power slide around. Whereas other people like to go into that corner, just let off, hit the rear steer, and the truck just swings around, and they don't lose as much momentum that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You could, you could argue either way, but I've always had more success doing that throttle brake and turn method. Mine, I think I'm running. I mean, it depends on the course, but my truck's pretty long. I think I got about 10% in the back of it. It doesn't take much. And I, I remember I used to, when I didn't know how to do this, like, so now if you're going to build a retro truck, you probably need to have a good radio that can do channel blending. Cause that's what we're talking about. You can actually tie, basically have like a master and slave set up to where the front is your master. So it runs off your wheel. And whenever that master uh, is activated, a slave channel goes off. And that's what you set your rear steers to. So, and then from that, you can actually take the percentage of throw in your rear steer, the slave, and you can take it all the way down to whatever you want. Most guys, you just don't need much because the rear doesn't have to turn very much to get the truck to turn around. Yeah. But I used to do, before I knew how to do that, I would use just a servo Y harness into one channel on the receiver. And that yeah, means that's what I did as well. That's full, full rear steer. Yeah. Anytime you turn the wheel and what you have is a truck that just, any, you know, I can't see that very well, but you're just snaking. It's like called yeah. snaking to where that's, that's something else you bring up there as well. Uh, you need a strong servo on the front and the rear to be able to really do this properly. Otherwise you will have like when you land your rear tires will just want to go like that. The rear, especially the and it'll cause you to be out of shape and just completely miss a jump. Yep. It's uh, like the drifting. And we should also say in a cloud, if you, well, they're pretty much all cloud busters. The, uh, you're going to need aftermarket steering too, because a lot of people that are newbies, they buy a cloud buster and don't understand that the steering is total trash. Like it's basically unusable that it comes with it. Yeah. As a the, the steering in the cloud buster is the biggest weak point of the truck. I, Axles I don't are know. Perfect. Uh, the main thing that you're going to want to get as soon as you get out of the box is that J concepts BTA kit. Yes, that is the best money. But really, if, if you want to, you could be competitive, I think, or at least, you know, hold your own with the stock cloud, if you had, well, you maybe want a Lexan body too, but if you had the, um, that J concept, that steering kit, that thing is amazing because again, I'm shocked. I am shocked that we are in 2021 and Tamaya has never updated the kit just for the steering thing. That's all they would really need to do because it makes a stock clot almost unusable just the mm -hmm. way it drifts everywhere. And there's so much slop. Yeah, but it's an easy upgrade. It is. There are vertical servo mounts out there that are available for fairly cheap, but there are also uh, the racing setups like the J Concept setup out there. That's probably the best on the market as far as getting your truck to turn. If you want to throw it, like try to get a little more throw out of it, you don't have to necessarily go their Shapeways route. You can shave your your lower suspension arms down. You can shave the the front of that piece down, like right where one of the screws goes in to hold it. You can shave that down and it'll give you just a little, that little bit more extra throw that you can get out of that truck and. It's something that has been fun to experiment with. I know that. Yeah, the, there's a lot of, like this class, I think above anything else, really doesn't do the cookie cutter stuff. I know that the regulator now, people joke it's kind of a cookie cutter setup, but even that I think isn't really because if you just run a yeah, regulator. But, and I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but even that you have to have set up correctly. Otherwise you're going to come out and you're just going to be another retro truck. Well, that's what I mean. If you don't, you've got to be able to, you got to know how to hack your steering, frankly, because 
if you're going to run a two wheel setup, you have to hack out of that ladder bar. You've got to hack some suspend or uh, some travel. And then those knuckles, you got to grind them, shave them to get the most you can out of it. Otherwise on a tight course, you'll just get, you, you can't, unless you get lucky and do the brake turning like you, which I, you're really good at that, especially on your big foot four, that really helps you. And a regulator with two wheel steer, I think you really need to be good at it probably to be successful on a tight course. Oh yeah. On a tight course. That's the biggest downfall sometimes is the really tight corners and stuff with the regulator. Um, like I said, I went in and I've, I spent almost a day in this hobby room just trying to get that steering to where I've got about an eighth of an inch more throw. I went to a race, Jason Ronan was there, did really good on the straight line, won the straight line, but went into the turning course with it. And that truck plowed like a dump truck compared to their trucks. So I wanted to make sure I fixed that. This is why I went in and I shaved everything down to get that eighth of an inch more throw. And then the next race I went out won. That's great. I know you've been running well with the, uh, with your regulator at the, uh, with the Jason Childress or the, sorry, Lonnie and Jason, they have their, uh, their series. They've been running for the winter, mm-hmm. but a couple little series that have, that have popped up for the winter here, um, in the, uh, in the Midwest. I can't wait to be back outdoors though, running with everybody again. I'm, I'm at the point where I am really, really getting cabin fever. I know you've been racing with the various ser- the series stuff. I, I haven't really been, I've been doing other things and kind of recharging and getting ready. And I've been working on my trucks, making sure everything's ready to go here because we're about a month out from kickoff and then we're going to have a nice long summer and fall, I hope. Oh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to Trigger King. I'm really looking forward to getting back outdoors. Uh, yeah, I've, I've ran these other series, but they're not keeping points on those series. It's just a for fun kind of thing. Trigger King is where the competitive juices really flow. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to get, like I said, get back out in the dirt, taking these retro trucks out and seeing what they can do, taking the sport mods, taking the pro mods, trying out the LNT, that stuff that uh, I think everybody is really looking forward to. I see a lot of racers, even at these races that I'm going to right now, you can almost, you can almost see them doing this because they know they're getting closer to that outdoor season. Those trucks are going to eat. And I think when we get outside again, I, I just, I think everybody, it's going to be so much fun. The weather here finally has turned a little bit. Uh, I don't know if in Illinois where it has with you, we've been having. Oh yeah. Time. I was out playing with the X max today. It was, oh, that's right. We couldn't record earlier. That's, that's interesting too. We, we, we the beginning of last show, we we're like, Oh, we could let drop a cloud buster in the amount of snow that we got this week. We're outside driving our trucks. Well, I mean, literally in the, in the couple weeks here, we have had, it was negative 15 and it was like 60 something. So yeah. look at that. That's a, almost an 80 degree shift in temperatures. So, I'm not complaining. Yeah. No, I'm not either. I can't, again, we're, we're set for a hope for a nice spring here. Um, you know, we kind of been all over the place with the retro stuff. Uh, I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be competitive. We've got the re- this is the, the regulator. We love it. Do what? We're all over the place. Cause we love it. And we can, yeah, we can, it's fun. We can spend I, hours and hours and hours talking retro. You do on the podcast. Uh, occasionally. Yeah. Especially <laughs> the last one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, do you have anything else? I guess we can kind of wrap this up. We've been all over the place with the retros, but hopefully that explains to you all out there kind of the history of our our outlaw retro class and why we enjoy it and the era that we're trying to replicate. Um, Anything you have to add on that, Josh, that we haven't touched? One thing that I'll say, and I I wanted to touch on it a little bit earlier, but we kind of got sidetracked. Uh, we We got a lot of flack about the motor choice that we had when we first started the outlaw retro class. My advice to any club out there is, don't be afraid to be different and try your own thing as far as retro goes. Oh yeah. You know, that's, I think that's important to say that Josh, if you got guys that want to run a certain speed or something, just do it as you long as you see what happens. Yeah. Why? Yeah, for sure. Just run, run whatever you want to run. Just make sure that the guys local to you are cool with it. You want that because you do want people to run with, but yeah, I mean, again, we just found 27 turn in general is kind of the sweet spot. They're cheap. You're going to run relatively, I think, close to the probably the speed you're wanting if you're trying to get that that late night or the, the late 80s golden age of racing monster mm-hmm. truck uh, kind of vibe. But if you don't want to do it, do whatever. Do whatever your, uh, your buddies want to do. And that goes with any class for solid axle monster truck racing. That's the biggest advice I could give anybody. If you've got some buddies who want to race, just get together and say, all right, what do we want to do? And do it. Just leave it at that. All right. Well, leave it at that. There you go. (laughs) I guess um, 
next week, guys. And feel free to put questions here if you have any. Uh, I'll try and answer them below uh, in the comments. Yeah, uh, as next, do I. Yep. Next week, we are going to be talking sport mod. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Pender racing discussion. And, oh, yeah. And that early to mid-90s. Uh, monster truck racing, full size monster truck racing, which is that again the era that we're trying to go after for that. If Outlaw Retro is that '90s era, Sport Mod picks up right after that mm -hmm. in, the, in the time period where the Stage Three trucks yeah, come stage, to their own. Stage Two and Stage Three battling it out in the early days of Penda, going all the way into creating the fastest era in the sport. Which, again, when you talk the lens of history, right? Like you, people can say certain things, but when you watch all these races, like if you watch the TNT series and if you watch the Penda series on YouTube, which you can watch any event you want on YouTube now, they are immensely entertaining. And you can just tell, this is no knock against modern stuff, but even like, you know, the Monster Jam where everybody's, they're all friends and really any of the series, like back then the guys hated each other in a lot of ways. And they were, they hated each other, but they loved each other. So yes, it was a brotherhood. Yeah. But you could tell they were trying to cut each other's throats on the racetrack. Oh, and yeah. that's what it, – it's just fun, like, to watch that stuff. Yeah, I agree. You see a lot of guys – that I'll point to one of the, what I feel one of the biggest TNT rivalries, King Crunch and Bigfoot. Yeah. They did not like each other in 1990 at all. Go back and listen to some of those Scott Stevens interviews where he's always poking fun at Andy Brass and the Bigfoot truck. Go back and listen to some of the Andy Brass's stuff, poking back fun at him. I love that. I, calling that a rivalry is funny. That's like uh, calling Scissors and Rock a rivalry. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> if Scissors Let me wanted to pop off. comes to mind there because they're both. They even. They, I think it's the Tough Tracks broadcast, but they even they're they're pulling in and out of the lanes with each other. And Army's like, "What are you guys doing?" Oh, me and Andy, we like to play up here. I yeah. I no. I, I you know I joke, but I love that stuff. And, oh uh, yeah. It's even. Even with when we're racing our our trucks, there's a lot of fun when you have there's like a lot Josh. Of fun you and got trash your, talk there too. Do what? There's a lot of fun and trash talk there too. Oh, I know, and people screwing with each other on the line and everything. And but it's funny with the running the paint jobs. Like I know our friend Brandon. He has the he runs a USA one, and you've got your your digger, the grandma, mm -hmm. and it looks like uh, it's just fun whenever the classic like real truck rivalry show up in the RC thing. Like when you have a final round, when it is, when it's USA one versus grave digger, or um, I think does Chris Paris have equalizer this year. Aren't we going to have an equalizer or are we? Uh, that's he's got to do as a sport mod truck. Okay. We need an equalizer because we we've got yeah, most of the big, I, I would love to see the blue and white equalizer out there. I, it's yeah, boy, that's a whole nother discussion. Equalizer. Um, oh yeah. That, that <laughs> like you talk about advanced trucks for the time. Again, I just, uh, I've, I've just really enjoyed all this. We actually don't have a Carolina Crusher. We had one for a while, but um, we, sh we should get. Uh, I, some I believe ones. there might be one coming down the pipe sometime. Oh, good. Hopefully, it's a uh, Crusher Two. I I dig Crusher Two. Oh yeah, I, Crusher Two was my favorite Carolina Crusher. Uh, I was trying to talk a certain guy that owns a certain company by the name of J Concepts to let me uh, take one of the J the Carolina Crusher that they did off their hands. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. He's, he's, he suddenly found it. And now he doesn't want to get rid of it. So <laughs> <laughs> we've, what else? Uh, there's some other guys who some great looking mad dogs that some guys have out there around the country. If I remember the oh, yeah. showtime guys, shout out, think... to, shout out to Ethan Saunders with his mad dog over in New York. That's uh, probably the best running one that I've seen. That's right. He, I've seen that one too. That one's beautiful. Um, trying to think here what we got, what, what wild hair we've, it's funny that we don't have a mad dog cause we are, we're literally close to the green boys, <laughs> like yeah. where they were at. We're here. In well, it's, it's a little bit difficult truck to build, to try to yeah. get right. I think yeah. that's probably the reason why you don't see that. And plus I think a lot of guys are afraid to roll it over because they well, might that, get teased quite a bit by the old school people. Like, Oh, we just killed a guy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah, guys, um, that's it. This is a fun discussion. That's the uh, Outlaw Retro class. We're going to be back next week. We're going to be talking. We'll probably be talking Penda with a little bit RC Monster Trucks in there. But no, we're going to be talking we'll about still, Sport we'll Mod. That little bit of a, we'll still have that grin on our faces. As we're talking old school. Yes, we'll be talking. Uh, we'll be talking Sport Mod. And Sport Mod is my favorite class to race in. That's my personal one. But we'll talk about that next week. And that's where we have our biggest numbers uh, as far as people. Um, 
you know, racing. So, all right, guys. Hey, uh, check out Josh again, Retro Monster Truck Review Podcast. The link will be below here. Um, anything else you want to say, Josh? No, man. Uh, just maybe go to Instagram, follow Josh Dig Roads there, and go to Josh Roads RC Racing on Facebook and give me a shout. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm always available to help anybody in need. If they have a question, just shoot me a message. You are great at that. I know that you pretty much you're always talking about stuff there, which is cool. Uh, plug this week for me, check out the monster truck madness column. Uh, someone sent in this is on big these amazing crush cars that he built. And we're talking TNT and old school monster trucks. Look at these pictures on big squid RC. These, these are beautiful crush cars. They look like a classic, like a TNT or even USHRA event. Okay. I'm going to um, check that out. Yeah. Check it out. It should have been posted today. I wrote it yesterday. Uh, and then um, you can check me weekly monster truck madness on big squid RC.com. I write that every week, normally Wednesdays and uh, obviously right here on trigger King RC. So thank you guys very much. Thank you for watching. This is a fun discussion and we will see you soon.